Welcome to Moments with Marilyn. I'm your host, Marilyn Boyer, the mom of 14 homeschooled kids who love the Lord and love each other. I absolutely love young moms, and it's my passion to give you tips and tools to encourage you and help you along your journey. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about how to develop a work ethic in your kids. Everybody wants to, to know how to do that. So before we get started, let me remind you, you can access our podcasts on Google or Apple Podcasts or our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, wherever you choose to access your podcast, they're available. Okay, so let's get right into it, developing a work ethic. Colossians 4.23 says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Building a work ethic in our kids was something we just kind of stumbled across because, as I say, we have 14 kids. They came, we had them about every 18 months, a new one would be born. And having so many kids in so short a space of time, I had to, I was desperate to learn how to have my kids help me. So when my oldest was five, number four, Josh was born. Um, he was seven when number five was born and nine when Matt, number six, was born. So I, I, they, just, they were very close together. And you can't do it all. You know, as mom, you can't do it all. And not only that, you're not supposed to do it all. You know, part of our job, an important part of our job, is training our kids to know what they need to know to be successful adults. And our jobs, the things that we need to do, are things that they're going to have to do. So that's part of God's plan, why kids grow up in families, so that they can learn those skills that they need to be successful adults. And, you know, you're not, you are supposed to train your kids to help in all the areas that you need to do to run and maintain a home. Not to say you won't have plenty of, t of tough days. You know, it, it may be desperation, I think, that led me to train my kids early. I've got a picture of my two oldest doing dishes at the sink. They were five and three at the time. And, um, you know, it would have been easier at that point for me to do it myself. But if you invest in letting your kids help when they want to, when they're little, they want to help you. And if you will let them help from the time they're little, it will just become a way of life for them. And it will just be a much easier transition. Like if you wait until they're teenagers and say, hey, Come help me do these chores. <laughs> They're not going to be that cooperative. So the things I discovered over the years, one, let them help when that God-given interest occurs, and it will be at a very early age. But capitalize on that interest. And yes, you may have to go back and redo something when they're not watching. After they've gone to bed, you might need to tighten up on the chore that they did. But, you know, I found that it builds a real sense of importance in little people they need to know that the family needs them. And we did need them. And it pays so many times, pays in the future, to train them while they're little. You know, being helpful and doing their part will soon come naturally to them. You know, they're part of the family, and everybody in the family has different jobs, and they need to learn to do their part. It also teaches them to look for needs and to take initiative in meeting the needs of others. And that's an important character quality that we need to teach our children. Lavish on verbal praise. You know, when daddy gets home after a day's work, tell him, um, you know, what the kids did to be helpful. Show appreciation for their hard work and their effort. And don't expect them to get things perfect because they won't. They're still in training. They're a work in progress. But kids desperately want to have their parents' approval. Remember to praise them for effort. It's so much easier for us to point out the wrong. You didn't do this right. This needs to be done better. And those things need to be addressed um, skillfully. But Tactfully, I guess I should say. Tactfully, you can tighten up on the specifics of how to do a thorough job. But don't expect perfection right away, especially from the little ones. But the more praise that you give them for their effort and their attitude, you know, praise them for having a good attitude when they're helping to do a chore. Number two, focus on character qualities. Character, as I have said many times before, is the foundation stone. Teach your kids the definitions of character. 
And for a handout for this session, I will give you our list, if you don't already have it, 45 character qualities to teach your kids with simple kid-friendly definitions and a Bible verse to learn for each one. And yes, it is our job to teach our kids character. And no, you can't expect just to teach them the definition of the Bible verse that they'll know how to do it. You know, that's part of the training process. But they do need to know the definition. They do need to know what initiative means. It's seeing a need and meeting that need without being asked to do it. And, you know, if, if all our family would do that, things would flow so much more smoothly. But you can't expect your kids to implement those character qualities if they don't know the definition. And a Bible verse, that's the first step, teaching them what the character qualities are. And character qualities are the qualities of Jesus Christ. So when you're teaching them character, you're teaching them to be more like Jesus Christ. Having the character of God doesn't come naturally to our kids or to us. You know, it's something that needs to be cultivated and spoken of and learned and help your kids to put that into practice. We're responsible to teach that to our kids. And if we didn't grow up learning it ourselves, it needs to be something we're working on in our lives at the same time we're teaching it to our children. I did not grow up in a Christian home, and a lot of what I you know, I didn't know Bible verses. I didn't know the Bible stories. So as I learned, I would teach it to my kids. And it's powerful learning when your kids watch you learning along with them. So don't feel bad that I don't know what initiative means or I don't know what diligence means or how to put it, how to implement it. Learn with your kids. And that's so powerful learning. Our children will benefit greatly just from observing us as we struggle to apply these character qualities to our life. We would often work on a character quality for a month and kind of focus on it. Before we'd start the school year, we would do the character quality of orderliness, and I'd try to get my home in order in the month of August before we started school, and we'd all have special projects, orderliness projects, to help get our home in order. And to teach your kids how to have a place for everything. You need to make it easy for them to obey as much as possible. For instance, if you've got children that can't read yet um, and you tell them to pick up and put the toys away, they're looking at this huge mess, they're kind of overwhelmed, you need to break it down into tasks that are easy for them to do. So like I would take a picture of a matchbox car or a dollhouse person and put it on the different containers. So I would say, okay guys, let's pick up all the matchbox cars first. They go in this container that has a picture of the matchbox on it. And then we have a toy closet and we would put the containers in the toy closet. But you could also put a picture of a matchbox car right in front of where you want that matchbox container to go on the shelf. So that's making it easier for them. Then say, okay, guys, we finished that. Yay. Let's do the dollhouse people. And you've got a container with dollhouse people on it. So we pick all that up. And then we have a certain place on the shelf where that goes. So in, that, in doing that, you're making their job easier. You're training them. You're breaking a difficult task down into smaller pieces, which is the way we all need to do it, you know. Um, you know, if you look at a big job that needs to be done, we want to do some extra deep fall cleaning. There's so many things to be done. So you make a list and you break it down into small little pieces and just accomplish one little piece at a time. So in doing that, you're training your kids. You're training them how to take what seems like unmanageable job and break it down into smaller pieces. So I will give you that list of character qualities concerning work ethic. We used to say when our kids were little that work is fun and fun is work. And then we tried to be creative in making work fun. It's not always fun, but sometimes it can be. And if we can make it that way, we should. You know, sometimes we're just so driven to, all right, let's get this job done, move on to the next thing. And we forget that we're dealing with little people. Make it fun. Um, I have a picture of Nate and Josh when they were little guys doing the dishes and they were, we didn't have a dishwasher at the time, so they were washing the dishes in the sink and they were making soap beard, soap uh, beard, you know, with the bubbles and they were having fun. Sing while you work. 
tell stories. My kids love to hear stories about when they were little, when I was little, when their brothers and sisters were little. So tell stories while you're working or planting the garden. Sometimes we would watch like a moody science video while we folded laundry. Having 14 kids, 16 people in our family, there was always tons of laundry and there was always laundry to be done. So sometimes we would just bring clothes baskets full of laundry in and turn on a moody science video and learn while we were folding laundry. Sure, it took longer to get the job done, but it made it enjoyable. The kids looked forward to folding the laundry because they got to watch a moody science video or a history video or whatever. We tried to make it something educational. But, or listen to an audio. You know, we've got tons of audios we've recorded uh, that Uncle Rick, my husband, has recorded history audios for kids. And we've had kids beg to have a longer nap time so they could listen to audios. So do that while you're folding laundry or when you're doing a drudgery job. Pop in an audio and listen to it and let your kids learn at the same time. That's making good use of your time. Um, occasionally, like when we would do change of the season um, or like fall and spring cleaning, and yes, I, I did do fall and spring cleaning because during the school year with so many kids, it was hard for me to to incorporate jobs that don't need to be done every day. So we would do, we would have certain seasons where we would do extra jobs and I would write extra jobs on three by five cards and we would all have extra jobs. I would and the kids would and would kind of cut back a little bit on the schoolwork during that time and would all have extra jobs to do to get the house clean. And sometimes when we did something like that, I'd take them out to Chick-fil-A for lunch or bring them out, take them out for ice cream or bring ice cream into the home and make Sundays, something to reward them for that extra effort because, yeah, it, it is extra effort. So some of the character qualities that you can teach your kids is diligence, viewing each task given to me as a special duty and putting forth my effort to do my best. Everything that we do, we need to tell our kids we're doing it for the Lord. Yes, we might be doing it because we're a part of this family and this family needs it to be done, but Everything that we do, we need to do our best for the Lord. Patience is waiting with a happy heart for God's timing. God's timing is not always our timing. As a matter of fact, it hardly ever is our timing. We're usually impatient. We want things in a hurry. We need to teach our kids to wait with a happy heart. Endurance, it's the inward struggle to endure tough things with determination. We all have times in our lives seasons that are difficult and we need to learn to endure that with determination knowing that God's working out whatever he has for us in our lives responsibility knowing and doing what's expected of me without needing others to constantly remind me and this was you know some of my kids really struggled with this they would do the job and they would do it well but they had to constantly be reminded so they needed to put some responsibility into remembering, write themselves a note or, um, you know, whatever they had to do to help them remember that responsibility without mom constantly having to tell them. Initiative, recognizing and doing what needs to be done before I'm asked to do it. That one is like one of my favorite. When you see the kids actually internalize that and and see something that needs to be done and do it just to be helpful, just because it's the right thing to do. But yes, they're learning this. Determination, purposing to accomplish my responsibilities regardless of the difficulty involved. Some things we do are very difficult. That's when praise comes in. If you know the kids are struggling and it's very difficult for them, praise, 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 praise. Resourcefulness, looking for creative ways to fulfill my responsibilities. And my kids were great at this. Sometimes they came up with easier ways of doing things. Well, great, that makes it easier for all of us. We can all benefit from that resourcefulness. Or using things that we might throw away, that I might want to throw away, and my kids would say, hey, we could use this to make such and such. We always encouraged our kids to make gifts for each other, and that was such a fun thing. And thoroughness, completing every task to the best of my ability, heartily as unto the Lord. Now these are character qualities, they're on that list of 45, but these that I just told you are specific to teaching your kids a good work ethic. 
and you might want to just help them develop projects to implement these and put them into practice. You know, it's not just teaching our kids information. It's taking them by the hand and saying, hey, let's do this specific job so that we can learn to be more thorough or that we can learn endurance. You know, the, our founding fathers, we have a lot of books and resources on the founding fathers, but they understood being useful. You read again and again and again in their writings how they purposed to be useful individuals. They wanted their life to be useful to the Lord. And we need to teach that aspect to our kids. Thomas Jefferson said, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. Um, Dr. Benjamin Rush was a signer of the Declaration, and he said, I believe the greatest discoveries in science have been made by Christian philosophers, and that there is the most knowledge in those countries where there is the most Christianity. And that was so interesting. You know, we did some research into that, and these are Christians that, that invented these different things. Samuel F. B. Morse invented the telegraph. He was Christian. Matthew Morey read in the Bible about the path of the seas. I think it's in Psalms. And he thought, wow, I wonder if there really is path in the sea. There must be. So he researched that, and he was alerted to it by Scripture. So he studied the paths in the sea, and he ended up laying the transatlantic cable. He found those paths in the sea. Cyrus McCormick, inventing the cotton gin, he gave millions of dollars to promote the gospel ministry of Dwight Moody. You didn't read this in your history books, I'll bet. Alexander Graham Bell, he invented the telephone and many other things. Thomas Edison said, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. You know, we need to teach our kids the value of hard work. Character is what emerges from all the little things you were too busy to do yesterday, but did anyway. Train your kids to serve with responsibility. Assign responsibilities in the home. We would have a daily and a weekly schedule for chores. Be flexible, but have a schedule so everybody knows what's expected of them. A schedule builds security. The kids that have schedules and have responsibilities are more secure. Certain chores we had were done on certain days of the week. If it's Monday morning, everybody does their Monday chores. And I would try to gear the chores to the child's ability or skill level. And I would reevaluate every summer who is most able to do this job this school year. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was this child or that child. And I'd rotate them because the goal is to teach your kids to do everything they need to know to live a successful life. And that includes the chores. That includes the mundane things that have to be done in everybody's home. So we as parents are responsible to teach our kids all the practical things they need to know to be a responsible adult. A dad, for instance, he needs to teach his kids how to work on a car if he knows how or to make a garden or skills in the workshop, or home repairs, budgeting, finances. You know, whenever Rick would, like, fix the dryer or whatever, he would have the boys with him so that they could learn how to do that skill. Even if Rick didn't know, like now, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. So watch a YouTube video, find out how to fix your dryer, and take your kids with you and do it. You know, a mom should pass on skills to her girls, like how to plan nutritious meals, how to bargain hunt, how to clean the house, how to decorate, do laundry. Now, a lot of my kids are much better at decorating than me, and they pass some skills on to me, and that works both ways. Homemaking skills, um, sewing. I mean, everyone needs to know how to sew on buttons, do some simple sewing, even if you don't do the more elaborate sewing. Photography, cake decorating, landscaping, yard work, flowers, finding new recipes, Sometimes for handwriting, I would have my daughters find recipes and write them on recipe cards to build for their future, but also for handwriting because they cared how it looked. You know, they were going to use this in, in their future when they got married and had homes of their own. So they cared to have good handwriting. They need to know how to plan and cook meals, how to bake bread, organize, how to use coupons. So the younger you start, the better, but it's never too late. Never too late. 
But I found usually around the age of two, kids would want to help. For example, a dad can let his kids hand him the proper tools. That's a good way to start if he's working on a project. And the child will be around and asking questions, and dad can explain why he's doing what he's doing. Both boys and girls can help wash dishes, uh, to sort laundry, to dust. You know, I, I would teach my boys to do home skills, too. Now, as they got older and they went and apprenticed with their dad, they didn't have as many of the chores around home. But they do need to know how to do them because they might not get married right away. They might move out. They need to know how to clean the house. They need to know how to sew on a button or to fix a meal for themselves. So as I say, you know, I would assign the chores in the summer, and then I would train the kids how to do each chore. Don't expect them just to know how to do it. You need to train them until they're proficient in, in it. Make your instructions clear and easy to follow. And some kids need more direction than others. I found that. For instance, I had one daughter who would see a mess before it happened, and she just knew how to clean things up and make things neat. Another daughter was very creative and... She was like preoccupied in her creativeness, and she didn't see messes. She needed more direction. So I would have her, like when it, her, it was her turn to do dusting, I would find she kept forgetting things. So for handwriting, I had her go around to each room and write a list of everything in every room that needed to be dusted. You know, at first I thought she's just being lazy and not wanting to do this chore right, but I realized she just doesn't see what needs to be done. So when she had her list made, then... Every Tuesday, which was dusting day, she would take her little list and check it off after she had dusted the things in that room. So she needed some extra training, and you will find that. Some of your kids' things come naturally. Some need extra training in it. So keep that in mind. And then check up on them, you know, because they're not going to do it right every time. You need to call them back as many times as it takes to have a job done thoroughly. Even if they're reading a book, or they're in bed at night, I would call my kids up and say, hey, you didn't get all the crumbs off that counter, come back and do it thoroughly. They need to be responsible. So we're going to break here, and we will continue next week with this topic, because I've got so much more I want to say about it. Um, so we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us today.